In this segment, we're going to model the plunger, ball retriever, and some ramps. To resize the box, we're going to click on it and then drag a handle. Next, to model the launch lane, we're going to use a simple rectangle. We're going to use a polygon for the plunger and then attach a spring to it. Now we're going to name the uh, plunger and the spring as the plunger spring so that we can refer to them easily. Now we're going to change some attributes. We're going to change the spring initial length to 5 and then uh, the stiffness value to uh, maybe 50. We want plunger to move just uh, up and down, so we're going to attach a vertical rail to it. And when we press the down key, we want the spring to contract and pull the plunger down. Unlike the flippers, we would like the plunger to move slowly. So instead of setting the initial length of the plunger spring in one step, we're going to adjust it gradually. And finally, when the user releases the down arrow key, spring should expand to its original initial length and launch the ball. Now let's test this. Oops, uh, we forgot to anchor the partition. Let's do that. Now try it again. This time, the spring is moving too much. To prevent that, we can change its damping value. Here, we need to add a stopper to prevent the spring length from becoming negative. And finally, we're going to increase the spring stiffness by a factor of 5. Now the plunger seems to be working properly. Next, we're going to build the ramps. First, we're going to build a ramp right next to the flipper. Here's a polygon for that. And we're going to assign an angle for to this ramp to match the flipper, which was a 0.6 radians, if you remember. Now we want a smooth transition from the ramp to the flipper. So we will have to test this. It was pretty good, but there was a slight bump at the end. So we're going to move the ramp slightly up and test it again. Now this looks good. Next, we're going to build the bumper. So here we're going to use a simple triangle. Although the, the real bumpers have rounded corners, just to simplify it, we're going to use a simple triangle. To simulate the right lane, we're going to create another triangle here. And we're going to test if the ball can fit through the lane. Now 
as you can see here the opening for the outline is larger than the opening for the inline so we're going to create a divider to make them equal Now we're going to use another triangle to direct the plunged ball into the play area. Now let's test this. Well, it seems to be working. Well, now instead of creating the left hand side ramps and lanes uh, from scratch we're just gonna reflect the ones we created for the right hand side Now we're going to create a retriever to return the ball onto the plunger. We're going to use a polygon and a spring for this. And it's going to be very similar to the plunger itself. We're going to rename the polygon as retriever and the spring as retriever spring. Now we're going to assign a behavior to the retriever. When the ball touches the retriever, we want the spring to expand and push the retriever up. Now let's test this behavior. It seems like the ball is getting stuck. Here we can create another triangle to lead the ball in. Let's rename this triangle as Retriever Sensor and assign a behavior to it. We want the retriever spring to contract and pull the retriever down when the retriever touches the retriever sensor. Now we can test the retriever. As you can see, the spring is bouncing too much. Uh, to prevent this, we can just increase its damping value. Now this works a lot better. Now we're going to create the drain. Instead of attaching it to the left outline, we're going to combine the two. And this is going to conclude the part two of the presentation. Thank you for watching.